Do you have more? Okay, I want to, I didn't want, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Welcome everybody. It is so wonderful to worship with you this morning. It is a beautiful Sunday. Um, first, I would like to thank our musicians this morning. They are Mark Kuntz on cello and Ezra Maris on violin. And we thank you for sharing your gifts with us. I didn't want to cut you off because they're so beautiful. <laughs> Um, for those of you worshiping in our sanctuary this morning, if you have offering, we're asking that you put it in in the plate when you come in to worship this morning, when you arrive. And that way the offering can then be presented at the end of service during the last hymn. Um, we do have a congregational meeting on August 1st, immediately following worship for the purpose of electing elders and deacons. There will also be a session meeting this Tuesday, 7 p.m. via Zoom. Um, I'm going to invite Russ to come forward. He has a little announcement for us. It's July and school kits. We've got 200 bags waiting to be filled. And uh, I know in the Friday, uh, informational bulletin we all get by email. It gives a listing of everything that we need. And if you look for that, we'd sure appreciate it. I know that at least two different stores have started offering sales on items already. And that's what we wait for. So thank you everybody who's contributed in the past and will contribute again this year. Appreciate it. Thank you, Russ. Um, this week, I will have office hours on Monday from 10 to 1. Um, if you are looking to get a hold of me, you can email me at pastor at fpce.org, um, or you can contact Kim Martin. And if you look on the back of your bulletin, I notice that it still has um, Pastor John's information. So just ignore that. But the end is the same, pastor at fpce.org. And then the number there is where you can reach Kim Martin. So if you want to get a hold of me faster than email, and I check my email often, but if you want to do that, you can get a, get a hold of Kim and she'll contact me. Um, and the last thing, very important, we want to have some social time. So after worship, our social time will be out on the deck again. And we do have water so that we can uh, share and get to know each other. And you connect with one another after not being able to do that. Um, I will immediately after the blessing, go outside and meet you there. Thank you. Let us join together in the highest calling of the human spirit, the worship of Almighty God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. In prayer, Holy God, your son, Jesus Christ, fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen.
We cannot come before God unless we are first honest with ourselves about who we are, about the mistakes we make, about the ways we turn away from God and the life God calls us to live. In this spirit, let us offer our prayer of confession to God and one another. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. God's word to us is a word of forgiveness, a word of assurance, a word of grace. We are loved and accepted. The good news of the gospel is that in Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ with you. And also with you. let us assume an attitude of prayer. Guide us, O oh God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. This is why I kneel before the Father. Every ethnic group in heaven or on earth is recognized by him. I ask that he will strengthen you in your inner selves from the riches of his glory through the Spirit. I ask that Christ will live in your hearts through faith. As a result of having strong roots in love, I ask that you'll have the power to grasp love's width and length, height and depth, together with all believers. I ask that you'll know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge, so that you will be filled entirely with the fullness of God. Glory to God who is able to do far beyond all that we could ask or imagine by his power at work within us. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and always. Amen. Uh, the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Ephesians 
talks about glory to God. This is a short piece, um, a variation on the hymn 238, if you happen to have the purple hymnal, um, Thine is the Glory. so much gentlemen our second reading this morning comes to us from the book of mark chapter 6 verses 35 through 44 this is the feeding of the 5000 and it continues the story right where we left off last week so the disciples and jesus are at the sea of galilee having had compassion on a large crowd late in the day his disciples came to him and said, this is an isolated place and it's already late in the day. Send them away so that they can go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy something to eat for themselves. Jesus replied, you give them something to eat. But they said to him, should we go off and buy bread worth almost eight months pay and give it to them to eat? Jesus said to them, how much bread do you have Take a look. After checking, they said, five loaves of bread and two fish. He directed the disciples to sit all the people in groups as though they were having a banquet on the green grass. They sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. He took the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven, blessed them, broke the loaves into pieces and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish amongst them as well. Everyone ate until they were full. They filled 12 baskets with leftover pieces of bread and fish. About 5,000 had eaten. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So the feeding of the 5,000 is a well-known story in our faith. How many people have heard the story? Raise your hand. Uh, yeah, I think almost everybody, if you were raised in the church or have visited a church, there's a good chance you have heard this story. It is one of the few stories that is in all four Gospels, with some variation, of course. And then the feeding of the multitude actually occurs six times in the Gospel. Jesus repeats this miracle, um, which is unusual in itself. It occurs again in a few chapters here in Mark. And there's some variation, it's 4,000. And sometimes people think that, oh, Mark made a mistake and he repeated it. No, Mark didn't make a mistake. Jesus repeated the miracle twice. In Bible study and in study of literature, I was always taught that when something repeats, it gives added emphasis. It's saying, hey there, pay attention to me. And actually, if I think about how I parent my children, that's true, right? 
if we say it a second time, we kind of really mean it, right? And sometimes I would even say, could you say it back to me so I know you got it, right? <laughs> Repetition says importance. And that's true when we study the Bible as well. So I have heard this preached multiple ways. And certainly there are many learnings. Like as I was preparing for today, there are like five different routes that I could have gone and all would have given us a learning. But this week, however, I have been contemplating miracles. Specifically, like what is it about miracles? Because when somebody names a miracle or we think about the miracle stories in the Bible, there is just something that happens to people. Some say that we Christians just love miracle stories, like love, love, love them. See the added emphasis, we really love them. But why is that? Like, what is it about miracles that capture our attention? What do we love about them? Because a good, a good miracle story lets us off the hook. Think about that. We don't have to do anything in a miracle story. After all, we can't possibly feed 5,000 with just two fish, with two lo or five loaves and two fish. So why even bother? We figure we'll just let Jesus do it. We are off the hook. It's a great story, but just leave that kind of miracle thing to Jesus. God will give Jesus all that he needs to pull it off. And we are all too happy to let Jesus feed the crowd and tend the multitudes. It is too much miracle for us. Let God manage the limited resources. In fact, let God do it all. We'll just sit on the sidelines, pray a lot, and enjoy the story. However, if there was ever a miracle story that proved this idea completely and utterly wrong, this is it. This miracle begs each and every one of us to participate, to be one of the 5,000, so to speak. Because in this miracle story, Every single person has a part. Every single person has a responsibility to the other. So I invite you to consider that this miracle, the miracle of the feeding, did not happen through Jesus alone. Everyone had to participate. The disciples played a major role in this miracle. They come to Jesus expressing concern about the hungry people in the crowd because it was late in the day. At first, it seems that they are expecting Jesus to do something or the people to take care of it themselves. And Jesus, instead of doing something, says to them, don't send them away. You give them something to eat. Barbara Brown Taylor writes the, of the feeding of the 5,000, you give them something to eat, Jesus says, not me, but you, not my bread, but yours, not sometime or somewhere else, but right here, right now. Stop waiting for a miracle and participate in one instead. If you remember, last week the disciples in this story were utterly exhausted. They were emotionally spent in desperate need of rest and relaxation that they didn't get. And so I imagine by this time in the story they are a bit hangry, hungry, angry, crabby, right? Which is evident because I kind of see a little pushback. You want us to spend eight months worth of food to go buy them, right, money to buy them food? So they're pushing back a little bit. I, I think they're just hangry, right, questioning. I had a professor that used to say, the disciples in Mark are the disciples. They don't always get it. A little, little behind recognizing the miracle at work. The disciples in the end do as Jesus urges. They likely figured that the first 15 people would get a piece of food and the remaining, you know, 4,985 of them would be watching 15 people luckily gobble up the food. So they broke, they gave, they passed their gifts. And each person in turn broke off a piece of bread and fish and then gave it to the next person, passing the basket onto the next person and the next person, and the next, and the next. And strangely enough, the food never ran out. 
the truth of the miracle is just waiting to be discovered. Life is often a wilderness. And we know this. We've been living the wilderness for about, oh, 18 months, right? And that's just the current situation. There was wilderness long before a pandemic. Many times we need to come together, not just for ourselves, but for each other. And when we come together, we are each called to do something, to share something, to pass on our gifts. We are the 5,000, and each of us has a part in this story. We are the body of Christ. Each of us is called to continue Christ's ministry, his mission in the world, passing on our faith, handing it off, and yes, even in the midst of heartache and uncertainty, to hand it off to the next, the next, the next, and the next. No one gets off the hook. On the contrary, we are each given some gift or gifts, talents, some part of ourself, even in the midst of the wilderness we call life, that we are called to pass on. It grows, it continues. Jesus knew what the people were capable of. He knew. You're going to hear me talk about Barbara Brown Taylor a lot because I really like her. Her words are powerful. And she said this. She said, Jesus operated out of a sense of plenty. He looked at the same things the disciples looked at, but where they saw not enough, he saw plenty, plenty of time, plenty of food, plenty of possibilities with resources at hand. Jesus saw their gifts, their potential, their capabilities. Jesus also knew that the people needed to discover for themselves that they were far more capable than they could have ever imagined. And my friends, so are we. We are far more capable than we have ever imagined. Jesus knew. Jesus knows. When we are willing to open ourselves to the possibility of God, amazing things happen. Miracles happen. Christ's ministry happens. God's mission happens. Jesus knew. Every one of us is called to share of ourselves, just as we have received from God. We are called to live in abundance, but it takes all of us, not just one, the whole body of Christ. Not one of us is off the hook. You go give them something to eat. Go and do likewise. Jesus pushed their boundaries and showed them what he knew. Together, they could pull off a miracle. So you have figured it out already, right? This isn't a story about God doing the work for us. This isn't a story that lets us off the hook. No, nope. this is a call story a call to every single one of us. Ordinary people, ordinary bread, ordinary fish, ordinary faith. When we come together as Christ's ambassadors to go and do, when we come together and pass on our gifts and our faith, when each of us is doing our part, miracles can happen and the impossible become possible. I believe it. I have seen it. We are the 5,000, my friends. Amen.
let us take a moment to lift our prayers and concerns to God. Let us pray. Most merciful and loving God, come Sunday, come Monday, come Tuesday, come every day, every hour and every moment we need you. Lord, we need you now. We bring you our joys, our fears, our hurts, those that are spoken on our lips and those that reside ever so deeply and silently in our hearts. Lord, we have so much to bring to you, but first we need to thank you because you have been so good to us, better than we could have ever been to ourselves. That we are here, Lord, is already a blessing, and we thank you for this day, our waking, and for every tomorrow that you give us, we thank you in advance. For the gathering of this community, we thank you. Lord, we have been truly blessed by you, and we ask that you might teach us to be a blessing to someone else. Lord, you know our needs and our weak spots. You know where the bruises are. Heal us, Lord. Mend us. Strengthen us, our church, our nation, our world. Give us courage to speak out in a world that needs voices of love voices of forgiveness, voices of compassion. Lord, we pray for missionaries worldwide and for those who proclaim your good news. We pray for those seeking you, for those who are discerning your call, and for those feeling weak in faith. We pray for those who are struggling, Lord, for those without jobs, for those without homes, for those with addictions, for those who are victims of violence, for those with empty bellies. Lord, you know who they are. For those living with pain, grief, illness, and uncertainty. Lord, you know who they are. Lord, we lift up those we've been praying for in this community. We pray for Caroline's neighbor, Jordan. We pray for Rosalind, for Tony, for George and Gary, for Barb, Bob, and Gary, for Bob and Dave and Jan. We pray for Roger and his continued healing. We lift up Ed and Laura and Wendy. Lord, I know there are others, but you see them and you know, and we offer their needs to you. Lord, gather all of your children to you and fill us with the spirit of hope and strength and peace. Enable us that we might be your hands and feet in this world, your ambassadors, and send us out after this worship because we know that when worship ends, service does not. We pray these things and all things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray in the language we are most familiar saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God has told us what is good and what does the Lord require? To do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God.
Gracious God, we dedicate to you not only these gifts, but also ourselves in deep gratitude for your call on our lives, your guidance in our journey, and for blessing us that we may be a blessing to others. Accept what we bring for your good purposes. In Christ we pray. Amen.
gifts and so much potential. May God bless you and keep you this day, every day, and always. Amen.